How are you guys doing today? Um, I hope you are all excited um, because we will go through philosophy. This will be our class philosophy 101 introduction to philosophy and I will be teaching you. My name is Jan Mikhailov. Uh, this is actually Russian. I originally come from Russia and I will try as much uh, as hard as I can to uh, do this class very similar to the way I was doing my in in class uh, in classroom classes. Hopefully it will work. Um, I taught online classes before, um, but as you all know, after the um, this uh, pandemic and the lockdowns and everything, lots of things have changed. And last semester, the way uh, I taught this class was kind of a combination between uh, online and uh, in-classroom web remote classes and it is challenging experience. This semester only one class is taught in this kind of dual uh, web remote online mode. The rest of the sections is actually fully online but I'm trying to uh, create this kind of lectures for both students in my uh, 101 3001 section who will be taking this class with um, online sessions, live online sessions on Monday and Wednesday uh, between 2 and 3.20 p.m. And for my other sections um, who will be fully online and then they will not have access to live sessions. However, uh, the way I want to do it is I will give them access to YouTube videos created um, both as a lecture for this class and as the web remote live session um, screenshots. So the lecture part is required and I definitely want you guys to follow them. This is one of the challenging parts about all this online classes. Unfortunately, I noticed that students do much worse and part of the reason is it's way too easy to lose focus. I beg you guys to uh, keep your attention and try your hardest because uh, if you lose focus, if you start uh, missing lectures and so on, your grade will inevitably go down. And in the end of the day, students get frustrated and I know this and I understand it completely because this is a challenging way to do it, but this is the way we have to do it right now. So on my part, I just do my best to create an experience as close as possible for you to be in the classroom, even including the fully online classes. So this set of lectures which I will be creating will be accessible to everybody through YouTube and again, I do insist on you guys actually watching them. Um, okay, so um, the class will be between January 19th, as you know, and May 20, 2021. How exactly is it going to proceed? Well, of course, you can find all of this on the syllabus, but I want to go through more details, first of all. Okay, so let me now explain to you how it works with the book. Uh, the book for this class is Socio, Archetypes of Wisdom, 9th edition, and Mind to Have Access. Uh, what does it mean? Do you need the book? You do not need the physical book. By all means, if it helps you, if it's easier for you to follow the actual paper book, you can purchase it. However, I do not require that. And this is why. Because I do require you to have Cengage MindTap access. You will find a link on it on the front page of your course. Um, it leads you to actually module and when you click on the module it gives you a link to the specific section. It also has a link on the syllabus. So if you read the syllabus, the last page explains how to register. These links are specific for your section, so you do have to follow these links. Once you follow them, you will get two weeks free access. 
The free access, I believe, is until February 2nd. And during this time, you will have access whether you paid for it or not. But of course, the idea is that during this time, you will have to pay for it. Now, it also gives you an electronic copy of the book. So you will be able to have access to the book in electronic version if you register for MindTab and pay for it. If by any means you want to have a physical book in addition to that, you can do that too. CSN Bookstore actually has two options. One option is MindTab Access, which again will give you electronic book. I believe it is around $80 or $90. The other option is a little bit more expensive. It's just over $100, $110 maybe. I don't know. They change prices periodically. I give you a rough estimate. You can double check. That option gives you MindTab Access and loose leaf hard copy of the book. We will mail it to you, I guess. You can do all this stuff online, so that should be there. Um, if you have any questions about how it specifically works, purchasing the book from the store, you can get in touch with the CSN Bookstore. Um, obviously, I'm not affiliated with the CSN Bookstore, so I can tell you only what they tell me. They have all this information. They should be able to sell it to you. The other way, follow the link which again you can find on the front page um, then register for access and either immediately or during these two weeks you can also pay with a credit card that's another way to do it that kind of uh, approach has advantage that it's obviously direct and more easy I don't know if it may have slight difference in price it shouldn't have a dramatic difference it may be Though a little bit more or less expensive. For people who have their books covered through financial aid, you definitely have to go with CSN Bookstore. For people who pay cash, probably not going to make much of a difference. Either way, by February 2nd, you do need to purchase one of these options. Often students ask me, can I go on Amazon or whatever other site and go and purchase it there? Now, I do not recommend it because it is possible that you will either buy wrong version of the MindTab Access or a book without any MindTab Access or any other confusion can um, ensue. I cannot guarantee any of this. And again, I didn't write this book. I do not even sell this book. I can only tell you what publishers tell me we should do, explain to you guys. So for this reason, I only recommend going either to CSN Bookstore or registering on MindTab using, using my link and then paying directly. Now I will go over this one more time during that discussion on January 20th. So if for my fully online students you did not understand something, you can either watch this video or you can watch this live session or you can always message me, that's another way and hopefully that will clear it up but i hope that this part is clear so this is regarding the book but why do you even need this book well actually there are several reasons and uh, reading it is of course important and it will be a big part of the class this is a good book it explains things rather clearly and accessibly it's meant for the introductory level classes so it actually is not all that technical, not all that complex. I think it will be a great asset. But that by no means is the only thing. Because in addition to the book, you will have homeworks and quizzes. Weekly homeworks and quizzes, almost weekly, total is 15, as you can see on a syllabus. And by the way, please make sure you download the syllabus and you look at it, because it has all the most important information. Once you look at the syllabus, you will see there all the dates broken down. On which date we cover what and what are you supposed to do. It tells you which chapter of the book you should read by this date. It also tells you which homework to do. And it also tells you uh, the quiz goes with the homework. Now, once you sign up for MindTap, 
you will also be able to switch your view to calendar view. There are two ways to view the book on the front page. One of them is actually by chapter, but the best way to go immediately change it to the calendar view. And you will have their instructions how to use MindTap. So you can watch these instructions and learn and understand that before you actually start doing that. But anyway, you change it to the calendar view. Every week you will see immediately what is due. So it will be easy for you to follow what are the requirements even without asking me or without looking at the syllabus. Once you sign into a mind hub, you will see it there. The homeworks will be coming up as we go along. They are not all accessible at once. They will become accessible for the week each week as you go along. Um, that way you are not tempted to try to do them all at once or something. So in the same time, the readings will be coming up too. The readings themselves obviously are not graded. You just have to do them for the discussions and for a better understanding of the class. However, um, the part which is graded is your homeworks and your quizzes, and they become one quarter of your grade. So now let's talk about your grade. Uh, it's actually fairly easy. It only has four components. Each one of them has equal weight. 25%, one quarter. So 25% will come from MindTab, from homeworks and quizzes. It will be a total of 15 homeworks and 15 quizzes pretty much every week with the exception of the spring break. Every time they are due on Sunday at exactly 11.59 p.m. PM on a Sunday and combined and the combined grade will come from MindTap. You will see it there combined grade will be 25% of your total. Then um, there will be three exams as well, and the exams each is 25% of your grade as well, so that will be three quarters of the grade, 25% for each exam. How exams going to be conducted? They will all be on Canvas. Each exam has 30 questions, so you have roughly 45 minutes, not roughly, exactly 45 minutes to answer the 30 questions. Days for the exam are clearly marked on the syllabus. You should download the syllabus. You should look at the syllabus because it has all the necessary dates, including all the dates for homeworks and quizzes from MindTap and the dates for three exams roughly every month. First one will be uh, about a month after we begin, then shortly after spring break, a little more than a month in that case because it's a spring, includes spring break as well, will be, we'll have second exam and the final exam, which will be cumulative, will be uh, at the end of this class. When we're done with everything on May 10th, that will be the final exam. But each one of them is equally weighted at 25%. So this is the entire grade. But there will also be extra credit. Extra credit will be assigned as follows. For people who signed up for the web remote class, the section 3001, uh, you will have extra credit offered during those live sessions that we have. When we talk about the um, particular subject in philosophy, I will be asking you questions. If you answer them correctly, if you participate regularly, you will get extra credit. So you definitely should attend those sessions. How about people who are not part of this class, people who are taking online only sessions? People who are doing it online only will get extra credit from the videos. The videos such as this one, which I will be posting regularly, will contain different clues and questions, which then later I will ask you guys I will send you a message and ask you something about that video. So when you're able to answer that question, you will get extra credit. Of course, in order to be able to do that, you will need to watch the videos too. Let me explain to you. The components are all important. MindTap is a very important part of the class because it really gives you not only access to the book, but access to this fantastic 
homeworks which have all sorts of animations they explain the subject very clearly you can immediately see there what is going on and so on but also the lectures which I'll be giving like this in the video they are another important important component of the class and the exams will be based on those lectures so in order to be able to do well in the exam you definitely want to watch the lectures just reading stuff online will not be enough so even for those of you who take it fully online it will be pretty much like a real class because you will have the lectures and you will also have homeworks and the book and the other material online now for people who took the 3001 section it will be even closer to the actual class experience because we will be discussing those subjects we'll be talking about philosophy it will be hopefully interesting and fulfilling for you but of course you still also have to watch those videos and do all this other work it's just an extra tool for those of you who need some sort of live interaction with professor but I'm always open for uh, sending me messages on canvas as well and this is by the way the best way to do it you can send me emails but the problem with the emails I get an email I don't know exactly what section you are in sometimes they may even go into wrong folder if you send me messages on canvas I get them immediately and it shows right away what section you're in so this is the best way to do it and by the way make sure you get notifications you have to go on canvas and check in settings what notifications do you set to get um, make sure you get notifications about specifically messages because I will be communicating to you with messages and in messages periodically you want to get that right away also make sure that if they go to your student email or something you have it redirected to a regular email so again you would get it right away um, because that's one of the problems sometimes students have they do not set it right correctly I send them messages with important information students do not get them on time and then as a result they don't know what's going on in class so this is very important now that we do not meet in the classroom at all it's important to have good means of communication so you'd be able to know uh, what do I expect from you when the deadlines are and so on keep your eyes on this stuff specifically on all the deadlines and so on uh, generally having class online is challenging and I do realize that however that's the only option we have right now and like I said even though I will try to do it as close as possible to the actual in-class experience but there's only so much you can do a lot of it is in your hands guys because you have to be disciplined you have to do all the required work don't let it go until May 10th which is when we have the final exam you have to consistently work and remember all the deadline and keep your eyes on the ball all the time this is the only way to get a good grade in class for many of you it may only be the only way to pass the class because I know for some students it's more challenging than for others and I realize you may have a lot to do you may have a lot of distractions well luckily for people who do it online only now you can choose the time to first of all uh, watch the lectures and also to do all the homeworks and also finally you can choose your own time in order to uh, communicate with me and even for the exams I give you the day for the exam and it's 45 minutes limited but you can pick any time throughout the day you want to do it it will be open at midnight and it will run until the next midnight so 24 hours during this time period you can start anytime you want but of course you need reliable internet and of course you don't want any distractions at least during the times when you're dealing with all that stuff so this is very important I'll try to keep you posted about everything send you messages inform you about all these things but still there's only so much I can do most of it is in your hands okay so now let's talk about philosophy because this class is called philosophy introduction to philosophy philosophy 101 what is it how is it different from philosophy 102 and I know some of you guys actually took philosophy 102 with me 
but others maybe taking it with some other professors or maybe you don't even need it but nonetheless this is a very popular class so what is philosophy uh, it comes from the greek language and we will talk about greece quite a lot especially at the beginning of class and it literally means philia is love and sophia is wisdom love of wisdom um, broadly stated philosophy is the pursuit of wisdom or knowledge using your innate ability to think rationally and systematically the introduction in the book explains it very well you should definitely read it if you didn't read it yet i do expect you guys to read it by the live session we have for 3001 which will be on wednesday january 20th but nonetheless i will explain it briefly right now for you so that you have some sort of an idea um, from my own words rationally and systematically this is the difference because many people think oh philosophy it's just you know sitting there looking at the sky wondering about stuff well essentially that was there at the beginning but uh, what is different about philosophy as a discipline philosophy as we do it today is that we do that systematically using certain system and we approach it rationally using rational methods logic itself started with philosophy and um, philosophy 102 is the class about logic which is um, why it is philosophy okay so when you engage in philosophical thinking you using reasoning reasoning is very important for everybody this is how we get things done right uh, this is different from just having some sort of a feeling or something like that reasoning is what distinguishes humans in particular we use language to do the reasoning but it turns out language has particular rules you cannot just say whatever and again if you take philosophy 102 you'll talk about these rules more specifically in this class we will not talk as much about the rules themselves rules of logic the arguments and so on we will talk about broadly about the discipline itself now the best way to understand what philosophy is is to think about the questions specific questions which philosophers ask which they are dealing with uh, the examples could be what reality is made of this was actually one of the first questions we'll talk about it next time but that's what people started thinking about like everything you see around you what exactly is it made of is there any specific material it's made of what's inside of that uh, the other question philosophers ask is what is knowledge how do you know things what's the difference between knowledge and belief this is very important today note that this is a huge debate today is there such thing as the truth how do we know the truth and some people say well I just believe something like for example with the current events um, some people believe that these elections were rigged other people believe that they were not which belief is the truth because clearly I mean let's face it there is truth right there right either the elections were indeed uh, rigged either they were some sort of large-scale falsifications which affected the outcome or they were not I think everybody will agree that this is a question of truth question of facts however the question another question we can ask is how do we know how do we find that out none of us is physically capable of going there and counting those millions of votes we have to trust people right we have to trust somebody's authority and this is where it gets interesting because some people trust president trump's authority he tells them it was rigged they believe him other people trust other authorities on the subject be it media or local politicians people in charge of the elections they are telling us no it was all fair so note thou that even though there is such thing as the truth getting to that truth raises a lot of questions it's actually even more complicated than that but this is a good example of how it can get complicated another question philosophy asks is what can I know for sure how do I know that note that this is already kind of 
related to the first question. Another question, what is justice? That is one of the earliest questions philosophers were asking. When we talk about Plato, you will see how Plato answered that. You don't usually think about it very much, do you? You just think, well, there is justice and there is injustice. And you can even demand justice. But if you stop for a second and ask yourself, what exactly is that? What does it mean, justice? Why do people have different ideas about what justice is? This guy may think that justice is one thing, and another guy may think that it is something else. So is there really such thing as justice, or is it relative? One more question. What actions are right or wrong? Note that this is, again, important. We all try to decide in this life, what should we do, what shouldn't we do? Why can't we do certain things? Why, for example, can't we steal? Why can't we commit robbery? Uh, why are all these things not allowed? Is it just because of law? Well, why is law not allowing it? Okay, maybe you can answer it in a way that you will say, it's just that if we do that, the life will be miserable. But note that there is another approach. You can say, well, actually, it says so in the Bible. It's a fundamental uh, law, law of nature, you may say, law given to us by God, which is not to be broken. And some people answer it in this way. Again, these are all philosophical questions. So basically, this is the kind of questions philosophy deals with. And based on these questions, we can also subdivide philosophy into a few major fields. Um, epistemology, metaphysics, and ethics. Um, there are different ways actually to subdivide it. The book adds political and social philosophy there. Um, some philosophers would say that's not a major one. This is actually uh, kind of a further subdivision. You can disagree about that. It doesn't really matter. But uh, for the homework, I know homework has these three as the major ones. And then the rest of them it actually talks about as uh, smaller divisions within this field, subdivisions. Okay, so what exactly is it? epistemology, metaphysics, and ethics? What are these three fields? What are they dealing with? Now, first, epistemology. Epistemology is the theory of truth and knowledge. So these questions, how do you know things, they all kind of fall under this uh, part of philosophy. What is truth in particular? What is truth? When you say it is true, what exactly do you mean? Are you just saying that you're agreeing with something or are you saying something more fundamental? Um, that is a big question. We'll deal with it quite a lot throughout this class. What is knowledge? How do we know things? Uh, episteme, actually, that is again a Greek word and it means knowledge. So this is why it's called epistemology. Uh, the science of knowledge. What is knowledge? Is there such thing as knowledge? Can we really truly know things? Um, what kind of things can we know? Is there like things we can know and things we cannot know? For example, can we know whether there is God? Uh, throughout the history of philosophy it was a big question and some philosophers actually thought what we can, not only can we know it, but we can prove it and we will see some of the proofs for the existence of God presented by philosophers such as Thomas Aquinas. Other questions within this field would be what kind of things fall beyond the possible limits of our knowledge? How can we know that you know something if you do know it? Um, in other words, what can you know with absolute certainty? And so on. Everything related to these questions of knowledge of truth is epistemology. Now, what about metaphysics? Metaphysics is actually uh, more exciting, you may say, and more interesting. Metaphysics includes questions such as, why does something exist instead of nothing? In other words, why does this world exist? Why is everything here? I mean, one way to say, well, it just is. But note that as human beings, we can't help but wonder, is there a more particular reason? Like, was it created by God? Did it start in some other way, Big Bang, uh, okay, the physics tells us Big Bang happened, why did it happen? Was there a chance it would not happen, or was it kind of determined there? Um, what is fundamental underlying nature of reality? 
what is everything made of? Is there something in there or is it completely nothing and we just have this kind of a mental illusion of stuff? Are there atoms? Well, as you probably know from physics, atoms were split and they discovered that they have elements inside of them and they kept on splitting uh, quite a lot more. We'll talk a little bit more about it throughout the class, but those are metaphysical questions. Note that they're different from physics itself because they kind of try to dig deeper. Physics can only tell us so much. It tells us about the things we already know. Once they split the atom, they find out you have electrons there, you have a nucleus, and so on. But, as human beings, we can't help but go and wonder about things further away. And we started doing that back in ancient Greece, if not before then, um, but as we will be talking about ancient Greece, we will talk about um, these kinds of questions which they posed among the first human beings. And naturally, at the time, they could not split the atom. In fact, um, they didn't even come up with the idea of the atom right away. The idea of the atom came a little bit uh, later after they started wondering about these things. These are all metaphysical questions, and metaphysics in general is known as the theory of existence and reality. This is uh, how we kind of translate it. Why is it called metaphysics? Well, it's actually kind of a historical curiosity. Uh, Aristotle's books were named after uh, his death by other people, and one of the books which deals with what we today call physics was um, going before the book which talked about this kind of matters. So this book uh, had no name and the person who was looking at it decided that since it goes after the physics, it would be appropriate to call it metaphysics, which in Greek just means after the physics. But the name kind of attached itself very well. And today we no longer think about it in terms of like the book by Aristotle. We call the entire branch of philosophy which deals with this kind of subjects metaphysics. Uh, what other interesting question metaphysics deals with? The nature of space and time. Um, are you free to choose your own actions or are your actions completely determined? Does God exist? The existence of God in particular this is very kind of deep, interesting questions. Some philosophers actually say they are not properly scientific. We can never fully answer them. Therefore, we shouldn't even ask them. However, uh, many other philosophers disagree and think that nonetheless, we, even though we cannot have determinate answers for this, we still have every right to wonder about it at least. Okay, uh, and finally, ethics. Well, you probably know what ethics is in general. This is a theory of virtue and morality. Virtue as in what is virtuous, what kind of actions we can say a virtuous type of actions, and morality, what is moral? Uh, what actions are right or wrong? What should be done, what should not be done? This is also part of philosophy. Are some actions inherently right or wrong? Are actions right or wrong based on their consequences? This is two different approaches. Some people, like I already mentioned, say that it says in the Bible it's given by God and therefore some actions are wrong just based on God's command. But other people are saying no, there is no God or if there is God, he never really um, specifically told us what to do because not everybody believes in you know Christian God or any other particular God. Some people just think that God is some sort of abstract entity, uh, but he never communicated to us. This is another way to believe in God. And so they say, well, there is God, but he never really told us what we're supposed to do, what we're not supposed to do. He may not even care about us very much. That's another way to look at it. And so based on that, the only way we can determine whether some action is right or wrong is just look at the consequences. Look what is happening. Like, why shouldn't we murder? Well, because it's not fun to be murdered. And we don't want to be murdered, right? So if we allow murder, there's a chance we will be murdered ourselves or somebody dear to us. So how about we just ban it for everybody? Because if we ban it, if nobody does that, then it will not be done to us. 
This is difficult questions. And again, uh, we will look at them more specifically throughout the class. They obviously affect all of us. And this is a great thing about philosophy. Philosophy does affect each and every one of us very directly. We all deal with these questions throughout our life. All of us decide what is right to do, what is wrong to do. Why should I do this rather than that? All of us wonder about this underlying reality and the possibility. Some people more than others, but at least every once in a while, each one of us probably asks ourselves, why am I here? Why do I live this life? Is there any purpose to that? Is there any meaning to all that? I mean, we're all in this boat together, right? So we know that no matter how uh, much you try to disregard it, these questions are inevitable. You have to face them at least every once in a while. And like I said, philosophy is trying to answer this question not by just pure speculation, but by approaching them rationally, systematically, by trying to create a system um, of this kind of rational systematic approach. When it started, there were no specific sciences. In fact, when we talk about ancient Greece, you will see that everything we today call physics and astronomy and mathematics um, didn't exist as separate disciplines. It was all kind of part of the same type of an inquiry, which they were calling philosophy, and that was the case for many, many centuries. It's only fairly recently, in the last few hundred years, that we started distinguishing these different disciplines, and we were saying, okay, there is a science of physics, there is a science of chemistry, there is a science of linguistics, and so on. Uh, for most part, if we talk about, let's say, last 3,000 years, for the most part, for the most um, chunk of that, people were not distinguishing all that, they were calling all that philosophy. And people who were dealing with it were philosophers. A few specialized branches within philosophy you may also name. This is kind of a, what goes under these three major ones, and that would be um, philosophy of mind, philosophy of language, philosophy of law, philosophy of science. Um, UNLV actually has special subjects. If any of you um, either specialize in philosophy, want to major in philosophy, or maybe you're just curious about some of these things, for example, some students want to become lawyers in the future, you may want to take su subjects such as philosophy of law. There are classes um, specifically dedicated to these subjects. So you can learn everything related to philosophy of law for example. And, like I said, logic, that's yet another uh, more specialized branch of philosophy, and philosophy 102 actually deals with logic, uh, and then there are even more specialized classes in logic, which go deeper into the subject after 102, uh, but of course they are not typically required from uh, many students, they are mostly for students who uh, want to do philosophy and what want to specialize in logic, or sometimes for students who want to do more math classes, because it is closely connected to mathematics. Mathematics and logic kind of go hand in hand uh, for the past, I'd say, 200 years. Prior to that, um, they were not really connected, but then we discovered that a lot of mathematics, especially mathematical proofs, can be written with logic. There will be very little of that in this class. We'll talk a little bit about that when we talk about Aristotle. Not much, but Philosophy 102 deals with it in a lot more detail. Um, political philosophy, that's another interesting area of philosophy. Those of you who are interested in politics may wonder about that. Political philosophy deals with such general questions as what is ideal political state? What are the purposes of the state? Why do we even have states? Why don't we just live in like these little villages or something without the state? Um, what makes a government legitimate? Why do we say this government is legitimate and this one is not? Note that again, uh, recent events kind of make it relevant for all of us. What are the proper limits of government's power? There is a lot of disagreement about that. What can government command us and why? Why does government even have power? Note that these questions are different from, say, political science, because political science mostly deals with existing governments. For example, with American government, constitution, 
the powers which are given by the constitution, the existing structure of power. It doesn't generally wonder about why. Why do we have that? Uh, this is more of a philosophical question. And again, political philosophy deals with all that. Philosophy of religion. Uh, philosophy of religion is, of course, like I said, subdivision of metaphysics, and it deals with religious questions such as, is there God? Can the existence of God be proven and how? And like I said, we will talk about that in more detail. What is the nature of God? Um, what is the relation between faith and reason? Can we reconcile them somehow? It was a very big question throughout the history of philosophy, as you will see. Uh, it started as early as the very first days when people started distinguishing religious belief from philosophical wondering. And this is also how eventually we got science, because science is, of course, something which separate from religion, right? You can be a scientist and believe in God, but know that you do actually have to take two different approaches. And at some point it was all kind of the same thing. Uh, how would you find out if it will be raining back in the day? Well, you will go to a oracle and you would ask him, is it going to rain? An oracle would do something and whatever it is they were doing and will tell you, hmm, it is possible it will rain. But of course, that's not how we do it today, right? We have meteorology, we actually use scientific methods. And this is why, because at one point people realized that perhaps going to Oracle is not the best way to find out. Perhaps there are other better ways. And it took centuries and centuries, in fact, thousands of years for us to really kind of learn that. But know that today, all the benefits of society which we have is the result of us actually learning that we have to separate these two things. But even though you can still believe in God, but you really should not use that to find out whether it will rain tomorrow because there are better ways. So all these questions are the questions of philosophy and we will be talking about them throughout this class. Um, this class in particular follows the book um, in general, uh, but um, I will of course give you a slightly different perspective than the book. We will put it together during those discussions for 3001 and we will try to look closely about what is the book saying in particular and how does that, how is it connected to my lectures. But um, unless you are curious about that, and I will probably put up those discussions on YouTube as well. Uh, for those of you who are not taking 3001, for those of you who are on fully online classes, it is quite enough for you to watch the lectures, read the book, and put it together yourself if you want to. Because we will be talking about the same philosophers as the book talks about, but slightly different angle. And these two different angles hopefully will help you even better to understand the subject. So this is, I guess, generally all I wanted to tell you guys. I want to apologize as well if there are any kind of problems because, like I said, uh, these classes were not meant to be online, but because of the pandemic we had to switch online and there are still quite a few things, especially technical issues, which we have to deal with right now and learn them and it's not sometimes as easy, so there may be some glitches. There are fewer of them now than there were last semester and there were fewer of them last semester than back a year ago when the whole thing, you know, suddenly shut down. But nonetheless, it's possible that there will be some issues. So I just apologize about that. And if you have any issues, if you want to uh, tell me something about something working or not working, I'm always open to you um, just sending me messages. And that's probably the best, the best way for us to communicate. But other than that, uh, those of you in 3001 can just talk about it during our live sessions. And um, hopefully that will also help you. And with that, I guess that is all I have for today. Uh, there will be another lecture on Monday because um, just like 3001, um, there are two sessions on Monday and on Wednesday. I will schedule lectures to air just before that. I will send you a link to this lecture and we will go into chapter one. So chapter one reading in the book is 
due this Sunday by 11 p.m. And please do this reading because without it, we will not be able to um, talk about it in 3001. Also, for those of you who are doing it online, that is also, of course, important. So make sure you do that. Make sure you watch my lecture. Make sure you do the first homework, uh, which will also be on MindTap. Um, first homework and first quiz, they are on introduction. On part of this stuff I'm talking about right now, and mostly now on the introduction in the book, which you, again, are supposed to read ideally right now but definitely by Sunday because that will be part of the homework and part of the quiz and with that I guess I am going to stop and um, again if you have any more questions please just send me messages I hope you enjoyed that thank you very much <laughs>